And thank you, Maria, for that. And uh, I think that Kai's going to be, you know, having the same type of good luck charm surrounding him because he does need to keep winning here, Paul. Kai Buda is on that fringe. He's currently sitting in eighth place on the league leaderboard. Not in the tournament. He's having a bit of a rough go here. He's uh, five and five coming in. So is Kenta Harane, his opponent. Um, but the interesting thing about this is that leaderboard can get very jumbled up as league players above him who make top eight and then subsequently make the top six will free up slots ahead of Kai. So he is hanging on by a thread, but believe me, he's not out of it. He absolutely needs to maximize these last few wins to keep himself in the discussion. And then he'll have to sit and watch on Sunday, see who makes it in, see if he can uh, free up a slot and actually make it to Worlds. You know, he told us before he got here, this that's what it's about for him. He is really trying to queue for Worlds. It's such a big step, even in an illustrious career like he's had. We're underway here. Kenta Harane on a cool deck, Paul. He's playing Is It Calamity? Yeah. So if you saw, if you uh, were looking at the, uh, the key card slide there, uh, this is basically a combo deck, right? And, uh, yep. And basically, the idea is you cast an Invoke Calamity, get a body, cast Body of Research, get a giant creature into play. You can either kill them with the giant creature, or you can kill them instantly by casting Kazul's Fury and effectively fleeing the creature at your opponent's face. That's right. So Kai is going to need to be aware of that at all times. Beyond that, you'll see the shell from Kenta Hirana resembles... Um, you know, an is it control deck, right? It, it's got some permission. It's got some burn spells. It even has sweepers in the form of burn down the house. And uh, it just tries to buy itself enough time to assemble its powerful combo. In the meantime, it's a grind fest for Kai Bude, But, you know, having instant speed removal, which he doesn't right now. Ooh, Jwari Disruption hits yeah. Kaito Shizuki. That's a tough one for Kai Bude. Now expressive iteration here from Harane. But um, you can see that Harane has already... Started to get some combo pieces, at least the hint of them with that body of research, an awkward card to have in your hand, but don't worry, he's got a lot of ways to discard it. Yeah, and he's, he's found the land here. There's a Kazul's Fury with the Invoke Calamity. And, you know, frankly, when you're playing against this Grixis Vampire's deck, again, it's not overly aggressive, right? Kenta's deck plays some amount of disruption, so it does, it's, it's not too difficult to kind of set that combo together. And if you wait long enough, you can actually make it such that your creature won't die that you make. And you mm -hmm. can just, if you find a Kazul's Fury, you can kill them instantly. So uh, in this matchup where Kai's deck is playing a lot of removal, but not a lot of counter magic, at least in game one, that's likely what you're going to see Kenta go for. So he'll go for make the creature, then threaten to attack you with it and kill you. And then if you use removal, fling it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it will just depend on how much mana Kai has available. Uh, okay. I know some members of their team, Kai included, has a singular spell pierce in the main. Oh, so, you know, to... if you if you see a blue mana <laughs> up, you you might want to be kind of careful around that. Yeah, that's one of the things that we've seen uh, get very popular in the open deck list era, right? Where players can take a look at what you're playing before and during the match while they're sideboarding and such. A card like just one Spell Pierce can actually go a long way because it does force your opponent to at least consider the possibility that you might have it in your hand. Yeah, and Kenta now does have the ability to put a giant creature onto the battlefield uh, next turn once he has access to the five mana. He did discard the Body of Research. He does have the double Invoke Calamity. Doesn't have a Kazul's Fury for the instant kill, but given that Kai doesn't have a piece of interaction in hand, that creature might be good enough. That's right. You see Kai taking a look at the graveyard here from Kenta Harane, but yeah, you know, having the ability to kill your opponent at instant speed through this combo is very powerful, but they do have the sort of lesser backup plan of just making a 30-30, you know, creature and killing you with it. Yeah. One thing I, I want to talk about is just kind of how powerful the is it shell is. Oftentimes it's just choose whichever way you want to kill your opponent, right? Mm. Because that combination of being able to have expressive iteration, big score and unexpected windfall, and then play a bunch of cards has just kind of been the recipe for success for a lot of these players, right? We've That's seen right. the Dragon's deck, we've seen a mill deck do well, and now we're seeing the, uh, the Is a Calamity version here with the Body of Research. Now Kai, with a pretty heads up play, seeing the Body of Research in Graveyard, chose to attack with Hive of the Eye Timer at that turn. 
and That's exiled right. the body of research. Right, so combo potential down, but the problem that Kai faces here is that the, um, <clears throat> the Calamity is still just a great card, even with, like, look what he's getting. He's getting expressive iteration and big score out of one card from his hand here. You know, that's the type of thing where Kai says, wait a minute, so now you're going to switch gears and just start to grind me out with good old-fashioned card advantage. That's a game that Kenta Harana can play as well. Yeah. I think this deck, um, in a lot of instances, may struggle with, if the metagame has a lot more aggressive decks in the field. But you, you're, you just don't see that in this format, right? It's all about the mid-range decks. Kind of the, the aggressive deck in the format is, I guess, Naya Runes, right? Sure. Um, which is not your conventional aggressive deck either. So, uh, yeah, there isn't be a, a deck popular uh, conventional aggressive deck, right? Like even the Angels yeah. deck is a, is a step slower than we'd expect. Right. So, <laughs> Kenta does research. have the ability. <laughs> yeah, Kenta does have the ability here to just make, as you can see there, a forty forty, at instant speed. That's right. Taking a look at the hand here for Buddha, he has all of his mana currently. This is his first main phase. He's looking at a pair of Evelyn, also Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and a Kaito Shizuki. He could also activate his uh, his Hive or Tenacious Underdog, so he's got a lot of options. Yeah, but I mean, Kenta is just sitting at a healthy 17 life. Kai needs to kind of find more threats to get onto the battlefield. Just activating Hive every every turn is not really a winning strategy here. And, and in fact, he's going to pass the turn back. And this accomplishes two goals for, for Kai. One of them is, well, he can just cast Evelyn. That's what he actually is going to do. But also, it has oh. to leave Kenta with oh. some thoughts about what might happen. That's a Kazil's Fury, a Marshall. He's got the combo. So does he, he have all of it? Does he have an untap? Yeah, so he has eight mana. And that's what you need to do the combo. You go invoke Calamity, make a giant creature, sack the three treasures, cast Kazul's Fury Ooh. for the win. And there's Evelyn on the stack, and with only one mana available from Kenta Harani, that should pierce, be the though. green light. Yeah, there is a spell <laughs> one pierce. One spell pierce, though. Is Kenta going to play around the one spell pierce? You can see the stress here from Kenta Harana. He has to consider it. <laughs> That's Kai Buddha sitting on the other side of the battlefield. I mean, he could play around it. I mean, the thing is, he can go end of turn Calamity. If you counter it or kill the thing, you can just do it again. True. It's a one-of, though. It's a one And this, by the way, folks, in an open deckless format, is why you run these one-ofs. Harana forced to make a tough decision. Now... One of the things that we should note here, right, is that he's not under much pressure life total wise, but Evelyn hitting the battlefield, which it just did, could find Kai some of the action that he needs to actually defend against the combo. And Haran is going to take the patient route. And Kai has to, though, at this point, it's like, okay, Kento, you, you've got seven cards in hand. I mean, you probably have it. I need to sacrifice this blood token. I need to find some way to kind of slow down what you're doing. Maybe find that one spell appears. Right, because as far as Kent is concerned, right, he needs to, to resolve big score here, right? Like, does he and, Oh, yeah, and have, this is it. He, he does, sacked the blood. Does, does he already have the body of research? There it is. Yeah, so, he's got it in his head. This yeah, is it. <laughs> so that's it. So unfortunately for Kai, he put the shields down yeah. for just half a second right, here. Right. And uh, Kent is going to say, thanks, uh, take 36. Bling my 36, <laughs> 36 to the dome. Yeah, that was to a tough spot dome. for Kai because boom, down goes 36. And even Kai has to smile at that <laughs> really tough spot for, for Buddha there. Because as you said, you know, he did feel some pretty extreme pressure from the number of cards in hand from Kenta Harane. So he felt like he needed to sacrifice that blood token. Unfortunately, that put the shields truly down for Kaibude. And Kenta Hirana picks up game number one with this sweet combo deck. Now, I will say, uh, things are going to get a lot more difficult for Kenta after sideboard, right? Kai's deck was heavily tuned to have enough answers to the Esper midrange deck. Lots of removal 
Voltage Surge, Rave of Feeblement, all those get boarded out as there aren't really any targets in this matchup, right? So you get to board mm -hmm. out all the all the sweepers, you get the, the beat hook massacres, all that stuff out of there. You get to replace them with duress, go blank, negate, and make disappear. So huge, huge upgrade here for Kai. Still needs to get kind of that that combination of pressure plus disruption to kind of close it out because again, if we see the games kind of go long, Kenta just has so much card draw in his deck. See if Kai can put something together here. He's now got to win back-to-back -back games to defeat Kenta Hirana and keep himself somewhere near the top of the standings. He's right now outside of that top five that are going to get the seats at the World Championship. But he's not that far out. He was eighth, so oh. only three slots out. What are you seeing here, Paul? Uh, it's interesting. Kenta... Boarding out most of the combo, right? Recognizing that, look, he's going to have a bunch of counter magic. I'll use Invoke Calamity as a value card, right? Just ways to kind of just draw cards, etc. And I'm going to win with Hullbreaker Horror, right? It's like boy, you, you might sideboard out some removal. Granted, th against the Grixis deck specifically, their removal spells can't ever really kill a Hullbreaker Horror outside of the two Infernal Grasps, right? So Kenta's now kind of transformed into Is It Control? Jeez, that is such a tough pivot if Kai's, you know, trying to attack the combo a little bit more with specific stuff. And what about this opener, a one lander here for Kai? Gotta ship that one. Now, what about on the top, though? It looks similar. Gotta for ship Kinto. that one as well. <laughs> yeah. So Kai found a keeper here on the bottom. Kenta did mulligan into a two land? Looks fine. Uh, there's three. Is that a... It's hard to tell just because uh, we have yeah. a lot of the DFCs over there. But um, yeah, that's double three. Kazul's Fury with yeah, yeah. Uh, with the dual land there. And by the way, they flipped over to show us the other side just as we said that. You know, Thanks, Arena. Yeah, All right, we're underway with both players on six. And Blood Tithe Harvester lined up here for Buddha. Yeah, Getting yeah. a clock on the battlefield. Yeah, nice, Very important nice, here. nice sequence here. Blood Path Harvester into Fable. Exactly what you want out of the Grixis deck. And it's going to be Land Fortel Go for Hirana. And there we go. So five power on the battlefield here on turn three for Kai. He's a bit out of gas at the moment, but we know that the Fable will take care of that. The Celestis hits the battlefield for him, and hey, Fable's doing real nice here. Oh, yeah. And look at this. He's going to discard Infernal Grasp. I feel like probably... I, I would have guessed two lands. You're decent shot. You find another land, and you're still not missing your land drop for the turn. Mm -hmm. Even though Infernal Grasp isn't great here, he right. can afford it. And look at that. Tenacious Underdog and Blood Tithe Harvester. Yeah, Kenta has has no sweepers, right? I mean, Kenta does have three copies of Burn Down to House, which would be fantastic here if you can wow. find it. And he could cast it next turn, so that's something that Kai absolutely has to consider. Well, he would be one mana short because Kazul's Fury would come into play tapped. Well, I'm saying from Kai's perspective. Oh, sure, land, sure. Burn Down the House right. is saying yeah, he no, has to consider. Absolutely. Yeah, so he's going to... Um, put Tenacious Underdog into play here, and that's going to get him an extra card, but also jump back to the graveyard. So he is kind of straddling that line. And um, Kai will be one point short, right? If he just tries to do the same thing next turn, get in for eight. Yeah, you're right. Get Kenta down to one. So Kenta has a little bit of time. Might want to just pass, turn day into night, gain a life, loot. Yes. Unless there's a, something he wants to... Okay, it looks like he's looking for something here at Sorcery Speed. Yeah, in this case, it's just going to be a land and then turn pass the turn back over to Kai. Oh, it looks like he just wanted to resolve that unexpected windfall, of course, as Kai is tapped out. Because, of course, Kai will be bringing in a lot of counter magic. Wow, Kaibut is so close here. Is there any way for him to get an additional point through? It doesn't look like it, does it? I uh, don't see it. Boy, this is the type of matchup where 
one is definitely not zero. <laughs> you know, like the passing the turn back to Kenta with four lands, two treasures, Celestis, and another land drop to get with, with the cards in hand is so scary. Some matchups, it's like, hey, what's the worst thing that can happen here? It's pretty bad. Yeah, and I like the side of Kai keeping the Evelyn back here as the play as he cannot kill Kenta this turn anyways. So this uh, this means that if Kenta did find a burn down the house, you you can still just recover by play casting Evelyn and uh. then blitzing in, excuse, casting the Tenacious Underdog from the graveyard for still, for a lethal attack. So I don't see how Kenta gets out of this. Um, it starts with Invoke Calamity on the Unexpected Windfall in his graveyard, but I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find a way that Kenta can deal with just all the pressure that's going to come into play next turn. Yeah, he would need to burn down the house, but also have uh, some type of spot removal to survive. And right now, that doesn't look like the case at all here for Harane. Nice play here from Kai Buddha, setting up lethal on board with a lethal backup plan and really forcing Kenta to react to him. So Kenta has to kind of spin the wheel here with unexpected windfall and just see if there's some combination of cards that can get him out of this. And I Bank think Buster, that's basically so it, much. right? Yeah. You can Calamity windfall, but then you'll just be, you'll just have two treasure left. You just won't be able to deal with everything else. Right. So now Kai just can do nothing if he'd like. He could also cast Evelyn just for I, the cards. Should, I, I imagine, there, I don't see a burn down the house in the graveyard. Right, so he's probably figuring out, is there a way you could discard one and right. then Calamity on my turn? Like, but, what are the combos that could actually make that happen? But Kenta casts a spell. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, if, if Kenta maybe casts a second spell here, and then... And no, then that Celestis would've... could be a yeah, thing. Celestis. Yeah, Celestis. Yeah, because that would be the way to do it, right? A, a right. passive way to keep your mana and then get a loot effect, but that's not on the table right now. Yeah, ultimately, whatever Kai does, he will likely just have it here, given Kenta's hand. That's right. So he's going to activate a blood token, discard a blood tithe harvester, and find corpse appraiser. So more mid-range goodness here for Bude. But all right, he's yeah. just going to stand pat here. He's got the win. Yeah, so what Kenta could have had there is also just invoke plus burn down the house in hand as a way to kind of have an instant speed wrath, right? So that's 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 the thing that, that he's most concerned about because of course there is no invoke in the graveyard. Excuse me, burn down the house. Totally. No, that makes sense, Paul. And so Kai just has to kind of hold his breath here. His job is easy. And Kai's like, all right, yep, you must have it. <laughs> What but you got? There's good news actually coming here for Kai Bude because he's nodding his head in resignation, going, All right, you're going to burn down the house. I get it. I know what's and happening. And then he'll be like, Oh, wait, I win. And then he's going <laughs> to, instead, it's going to be unexpected windfall. Oh, and look at that. Kai loves what he sees here. Yeah. It's like, okay. That, this one resolves. Yeah, that one you may have. And, and there's a couple of cards it. that go into hand, but in the meantime, it's an all-out attack, and Kai Budi says, what was I even worried about? <laughs> Not a problem at all. Even things up at one game apiece. I love the expressions from Kai there. He's, yeah. You can tell, you know, you can feel what he's going through here, right? Like, Kai knows that at 5-5, five and five, you know, this particular tournament top eight is out of reach uh, under, you know, basically all conditions. But he knows how important, even though this is a round 11 match where he's 5-5, five and five, he needs to keep his hopes alive because things can happen tomorrow. They really can. If oh, yeah. you know, if multiple league players make it into the top eight, which let's face it, if you're in one of the leagues, you're probably one of the best players. That means you're probably one of the people that's most likely to make it into the top eight who are ahead of him can make it in and then make it to top six. Those are seats that just open up in front of Kai like got to win this game to keep that, you know, just to, to stay in the conversation. Much, much better hand this time for Kenta. An actual form of interaction. Uh, cost five mana, but... But Kai, I mean, 
Can't complain too much about Kai's hand. He would probably like a duress or a counter of some sort there, but given that you still have that curve of two into three, and both Kaito and Fable allowing you to dig for some cards, mm -hmm. can't throw that away. Yeah, it's a nice curve here, similar to the one that he had before. Right, he's going to go with Tenacious Underdog here. That's the most power he can put out this turn. And it survives the end step. Kai gives a little eyebrow raise. He likes that. There's Expressive Iteration. A Volted Surge would be nice. Oh, there it, there is. it is. So, Exile Volted Surge. Play a Red Source from hand. Then... He's already got a burn down that, but really likes it. So going to have a second, a second copy, one. maybe playing potentially playing around a duress. Oh, Just that makes sense. Having yeah. more copies of it available. One of them could get countered, and then he could still right. recover. So there's Voltage Surge. It's really important that he takes that card off the battlefield, not just the three damage each turn, but also for Kaito. So instead of Kaito, we're going to see Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Likely seeing a main phase big score here. Very important to just resolve this, because once you get to seven mana, that's an uncounterable Hullbreaker Horror. Yeah, and getting your big score countered is really tough. Yeah. And this does set him up. You see that mountain in hand? He's got four lands, two treasures, so uh, Hullbreaker Horror is ready to come down. Now, the question is, what is his life total set up? Because you can just go for it, but if you don't have any spells that you can cast at instant speed to kind of protect it, then then a single removal spell could take it down. Right. Now keep in mind, Kai's only got two Infernal Grasps. Those are the only cards yeah. in his deck that can actually kill Holebreaker Horror. I'm sure Kenta's very well aware of this, so I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see Kenta just go for the end step Holebreaker here. Ooh. It makes me nervous. <laughs> you know, like... If it gets killed, what's his backup plan? I guess he has stuff to do. I mean, he can put a 40-40 into play, right? He drew the one copy of Is Body of Research. Yeah. So he can, cal he can Calamity that in. No, you're right, Paul. And, so. and now all of a sudden you're asking Kai to have both copies? Right. That's unlikely. And it is interesting because, you know, there's some matchups. Oh, wow. Corpse Appraisers. Oh, oh, there's an Infernal Grasp there it and is. a Soul Transfer. <laughs> oh, this I, got I mean, interesting. I, I imagine it's... it's just got to be Grasp, it's, right? It's, it's got to be the Grasp here, right? Does he even have a card in the graveyard to get back? And I don't think so anymore. Yeah, I, I, right. I think that he just exiled the Tenacious Underdog, and that would have been it. Okay, okay, so he found the Grasp here. So if Kenta goes for just... Hullbreaker go? I mean, Kai will have an answer. Yeah, so then the question becomes, when do you Hullbreaker? Do, do you right. ambush a creature with it? Like, there's some upside. I don't know if it exposes it to any risk that you wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah, I mean, Kenta can, can also alternatively this turn just go for the sweeper here, right? Yeah. Uh, in instant speed sweeper potential. For example, let's say Kai attacks and then plays Kaito, right? You can, mm -hmm. you can sweep the entire board away by casting Invoke Calamity Ooh. and burn down the house. Get the Kaito. Sure, Kai will be able to draw a card off the Kaito, but all of a sudden Kai has to rebuild with just the Bloodthirsty Adversaries. I kind of liked your line from before the best, where you go, here, it's a Holebreaker Horror. If you don't kill this, I'm going to win anyway. And if you do, <laughs> then I'm going to go for the combo. You know, to And I don't mean the full combo. I just mean getting down a you know, 38, 38 or whatever, and go, you have to kill this too. Uh, that is right. presenting a heck of a lot for Kai to deal with. And he doesn't have a big window to do so, right? Like, all right, he's oh, going it, for Invoke Calamity right now. So it looks like this is Sweeper. It feels this like gonna, it's a Sweeper because if you wanted to ambush, you would wait for the attack. That's right. And this will, the reason to do this now is to prevent the treasure from the Goblin Shaman, I suppose. Yeah. But then Kai but it does Kai take down that ability for Kaito to be on the battlefield. He didn't know about it, but some potential upside lost there. Okay, nice and safe here for Kenta. 
taking probably the most conservative line that he could. Okay. But it does leave him still really good options. Kenta is sitting at a pretty healthy 18 this time around, though. So has yeah. several options. And there's Kaito. Oh, and we're Kenta leaving. valuing his life total and the potential treasure from Kai here higher than the possibility of nabbing a Kaito Suzuki that he didn't know if Kai had or not in hand. I mean, Kenta, now that body of knowledge just doesn't do anything, right? Just, I guess, actually, you have two treasures. You are... Are one we probably research away. hard casting here? <laughs> we're, we're, we're one we're one man away. I'm not one ready for that, away. Paul. I'm just not. I just just saying it's a possibility. Could happen. That would be hilarious. Wow. Oh, you know I forgot about Hagra Mauling. That is also oh. a removal spell. And that's an instant speed. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, he discarded it. Okay. Kai just wanting more interaction, and he's just passing. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Man, to it's got to be so stressful to be Kenta. Look at Kenta. He's just like this guy. <laughs> he just because he discarded Hogger Mauling, right? Totally. And passed. That ha that has to signal some alarm bells, right? Absolutely. But here it is. Holebreaker Horror goes on the stack. Okay. There's nothing at Gotta one mana it. for Kenta. So this is the window for Kai Buddha to take down the horror. I, I think next turn we're gonna see some some. I don't know what Kaito's on right now. Let's let's. Uh, it's on five. So you five. could just burn down the house to get it off the battlefield. You could also choose to make devils. Yes. Yeah, he wants iteration. <laughs> this has been a weird okay. game. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is a weird deck, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think Kai is going to be relieved that he's still in this thing. Oh, oh he used the treasure, of course. I was going to say the Celestis also gives you a green source, but he's still oh. one mana away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I keep forgetting. That's really funny. Very close, very close. Well, I guess he's just going to lean on burn down the house to keep him alive for a couple of turns. What is Kai's plan here, though? He could go for an oh. adversary. You can cast Soul Transfer and return Corpse Appraiser. Okay, so okay. That is the play. I mean, you don't have anything else, really. And probably want to just do that, tick up Kaito, get it up to six. So it gets to survive burn down the house. Um, you can even play the Corpse Appraiser this turn if you want. You can, yeah. And there is a there is a Hallbreaker Horror in the graveyard as a target. Not bad. Okay, so he's going to get back the Corpse Praiser. <clears throat> Make himself a 3-3 Haster. That'll get him an extra card off of Kaito Shizuki as well. So a very productive turn here for Bude. Let's see what he yeah. gets off of the Kaito. Oh, and it's a duress. Oh, oh his eyebrows went up at that. That's Jeez, a game changer. That's Cancel big. that corpse appraiser. Let's go for duress instead. Thank right. you very much. And and uh, and he's got a, uh, an adversary in hand too. So he can duress again next turn. So he can decide on body of research, which is clearly kind of the scariest individual card because that's the type of card that you can just lose to. But he, he, he could also right. start chopping down these burn down the houses. However, if Kenta does just hard cast body of research, mm -hmm. um, Kai can just cast the adversary and then cast the infernal grasp in his graveyard. Okay. So it wouldn't be able to kill him. Right. I mean, the fear would be that, that Kenta would get up to nine mana and just fling it, you know, with a top deck yeah, Azul's right. Fury or something. Yeah. But that's a risk that Kai's willing to take here. He actually took down... The uh, burn down the house. One of the two copies there. It's Reckoner Bankbuster off the top here for Kenta. So that's a way for him to start generating some advantage, but it's slow. It is very slow, and it's the fact that the the Kaito is on six here is also a bit awkward. Very. 
Burn down the house just to kill a 3 3, okay. then play the bank buster, and Kai has got to be happy with what he's seen here. He knows both cards in hand for Kenta as well. Yeah. Kenta can start to rebuild here with the Reckoner, uh, with the Bank Buster. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Kai next turn, excellent turn, right? You go adversary, duress away the body, potentially, or can just lead with the Corpse Appraiser first. See what you get. Yeah. Xander's Lounge was the draw step there for Bude. What if, what if Kai just duresses away this body and Kenta draws into Invoke and Fling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't duress against that. Can't duress the top of the deck. No. Okay. Hallbreaker Horror becomes appraised. It's appraised very highly. <laughs> Ooh. Another well, duress. That's, he knows the that's hand. too slow, though, right? Yeah. Is it worth keeping, though, for, for a later turn? Because he it's does possible, also... but the mm -hmm. hive might just be better. Okay. He did take the hive. I know, okay. Ooh, another corpse appraiser as well. And I there's there's probably a yeah, there's an adversary in the graveyard, right? So I can probably exile that one. Yeah. So this could, turn could just be double corpse appraiser or he can still do the adversary i mean how important is it to take that body of research out of hand this turn like i mean it's not currently cast it's really difficult for kenta to cast right so kai could just be like hey look if you find the mana and cast it that's fine i'll just cast the adversary next turn duress you and also kill your token oh yeah because he's getting up there in mana now yeah he requires can even eight double mana trigger for the double trigger <laughs> These corpse appraisers, they're hey, really good at finding each other. They're just chaining together now. Corpse appraiser takes out a creature from his own yard, but he finds another corpse appraiser with it. And hive could also All be right. a, an important part of the combat. Bank buster time. Here. So does he trash a treasure here to? Yeah, bank I bust? don't think he's yeah. on the cast it mode. Oh. Okay. Okay. So he finds Malevolent Hermit and another copy of Holebreaker Horror. Huh. So again, Kai does have an Infernal Grasp in Graveyard. If Kenta chooses to cast this horror as a way to mm -hmm. ambush the appraisers, right? Yes. He would eat one of the appraisers, but then Kai could... Follow that up with uh, a post-combat adversary. Now, what's interesting is if Kai just leads with adversary next turn. Because that's given that Kenta's what he drawn wants cards, to do, right? Yeah. Right. So if Kai goes adversary, duress you, and Kenta goes resolve. <laughs> Kenta goes sure. Yeah. Horror go. Um, right. That could be a big problem for Kai Bude because he needs answers for that Holebreaker horror and you. Uh oh. Oh. This is getting really this, interesting now. It's a lot of action here now. So now he has an instant to go along with it, but not quite enough mana, right? Seven, yeah. eight. Yeah, he's a little short on it, doing both. It might be tempting to. Oh, and Kai's going to go with the adversary here. Yeah, this is what his line was leading him to the whole time. Remember, he knows about the two cards on the left there. Oof. He can pay for Jwari Disruption as well, which he also knows about. Yeah. Does he have a relevant second spell to cast? I, I, there's a Duress for sure. Yes. Maybe just another. Let's find out. He also may just uh, do this once, right? So there's two Duresses. There's two Duresses, Okay. Yeah. So, you know, in, in Kai's eyes, I'm sure he's thinking, okay, double, I don't have any other way to disrupt you. So double yeah. duress is, is pretty strong here. It'll also show him about the Holebreaker Horror so he doesn't have to run one of his creatures in if he doesn't want. But right. that's bad news. Like, <laughs> yeah, and so. if you, it, you can duress away the body and 
the unexpected, excuse me, the windfall. Yeah. However, you still just run out the horror. Yes. And that you're drawing cards off the Bankbuster. You can also loot with the Celestis, right? Absolutely. Kai is not going to be happy about this. No, he's decided to take the middle ground here and just do one kicker on the Bloodthirsty Adversary. That'll get him one duress. That will leave him I... room for Corpse Appraiser or Fable if he'd like. <sighs> does, Ka does Kenta just let this result? He goes, it just resolves. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, oh yeah no. so he's like yeah okay windfall i knew about oh no a hole breaker horror. yeah he's like well he's gonna take the windfall but now he's gonna have yeah. to deal with this horror if kenta finds can just chain together a bunch of spells you can just you can just utilize this as your win condition it doesn't take much i mean it, kenta right. doesn't have it now but he gets to see multiple cards and if he just finds almost any number of spells he can just dominate the board with the whole breaker horror it's so difficult if they get to untap and, and do really anything right oh yeah, so man we're gonna loot could still find a removal spell yeah and kana needs to there's a land okay. so that's not it and i don't think there are any are there any corpses left to appraise oh uh no i don't think there oh, are oh there's a hermit there's a hermit oh the hermit right yeah, he discarded hermit, yeah, it so Gonna be appraising that one. So he's got an army, and and you know, bouncing corpse appraisers doesn't feel especially good. Although I think we're out of corpses at this point. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, this has been a good game. Oh man. I wonder. Oh, okay. Spell Pierce Duress, that does not do it. I mean, you could still just duress away the body. <laughs> so, play the horror. And Kai's cast a bunch of spells, so the Celestis is triggering, right? Yeah, Kai's cast like three spells already. <laughs> All right, take the body. <laughs> Solves a minor issue, <laughs> but not the big one. Maybe you take Disruption just because Disruption is a, a spell that Kenta can cast? Yeah, it's tough yeah? because okay. Kenta can't just put it on the stack you know, whenever he wants, but it counts in response to anything. There's a whole breaker horror. And by All the right. way, Kai did attack Kai with everything. anyways. Yes. So that's very much worth noting here. So because... this gets him down to 10, and then you you have potentially a lethal attack next turn, right? With the Hive of the Eye Tyrant? Right. Let's see, you block... No, no, you go to, you go to one. Because next turn, Kenta Has could block it... one of the three threes and would take it... nine. And he's used Kaito, so he can't make a ninja. Wow, okay, okay back to Celestis trigger. Yep. And it looks like he's had a enough lot of sense. body of research. Yep. And it's a land off the top. So he uh, still can't just put a spell on the stack, at least currently. Right. Could have Bank also cho chosen to activate the Bankbuster in response, right? Mm. In case you somehow wanted wanted the body. <laughs> Another Okay. Bankbuster. Is it too That's just, slow? It's just more cards. I mean, it's a spell he can put on the stack, right? So let's start there, because <laughs> yeah. that'll get him a whole breaker horror trigger. Even if it is sorcery speed, he can still, you know, bouncing and corpse appraisers, like you said, in a, isn't a great long term plan. But right now, there's one corpse appraiser in the yard. I don't know. You could probably yeah. feel okay about it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's also part of why Kai chose to attack last turn, right? Because he's going, mm -hmm. okay, well, your game plan with this card is to bounce my permanence. The only way I'm going to win is by continuing to put pressure on your life total. And also, if you eat one of my creatures and you bounce my appraiser, I can just replay it. And now there's going to be gas for the appraiser for me to find more cards. Right, so well played there by Kai. It could be tough, though. Kenta, with Saw it coming in hand, you know, he's just got a hard counter. Right. 
that he can use to protect his whole breaker horror and also diminish the board for Kai. I mean, what is Kai supposed to do? Not cast spells? That's not going to work. There's the bank buster. All right. Just keeping his life total high. And now, I mean, with all the mana that Kenta has available, I mean, we're, we're just looking at three extra cards a turn, potentially four with the Celestis. Can counter this Corpse Appraiser, potentially. And this Holebreaker Horror gets to take down Kaito Shizuki as well, so it's already done good work. Make That's disappear not is certainly much. not what Kai wants to see here. So he's going to have to uh, Corpse Appraiser and cross his fingers, it looks like. Yeah, or before casting anything, mm -hmm. could just choose to activate the Hive and attack first so nothing gets bounced. If or if Kenta happens to just have a counterspell in hand. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And that does happen to be the case. Now, Kai doesn't know it either, so he's going to have to work through that. Oh, he's going for the Corpse Appraiser. Now, and this is going to set back Kai pretty far. I guess he's bouncing the Corpse Appraiser. He's bouncing the treasure? No, wait. That's aggressive. Huh. Kai looks confused. I, I guess he's just saying, hey, if you want to attack me, go for it. Boy, that's a... Maybe he's just saying if I bounce one of the creatures, you just get to get value off of it right away right. anyway. Yeah. But I got to say, his life total, you know... Life total matters here a lot. Yeah, so he's he is gonna go down to what five here? Five. And then Kenta's going to draw a bunch of cards here. Yeah. I mean so, Kenta should be able to find enough action between his draw right. step, the bank busters, and maybe a Celestis in there somewhere. He doesn't need much. Oh, oh. boy. That's some business. Expressive that's a iteration was the draw there for Kenta Harani, and that's gonna lead him to decimating the board here from Kai Bude. He's going to start off with a Goblin Shaman. And it looks like, yeah, this is interesting. Kai can sacrifice the Shaman to casualty here and just force Kenta to tap a bunch of mana if he wants the expressive iteration to still resolve. Yeah, I mean... He's going to lose the token anyway. I imagine Kenta's going to want to still pay for this iteration, just finds you more spells, right? Yeah, I think and... so. And... It is four mana, though. I mean, he could spend that four mana to just draw two cards off the bank busters. He has to consider this, at least. Yeah. But I still like it. But, I, you but can also like, hit a you have to pay two mana to draw a card anyways off the bank buster, and iteration exactly. is basically drawing two cards. Exactly. Um, And he can... So he, if he pays the four... And remember, uh, one of the bank busters is on one, so he can make a chump blocker there, too, right? Mm -hmm. So he can, right. he can eat the last counter and make a 1-1 one -one there to chump block as well. I, I imagine... Kenta's going to want to pay for this. Especially since he drew a land off of that one. Mm -hmm. He gets a treasure from the Bank Buster as well. And remember, Kenta also just doesn't have to attack with this horror, right? He can just keep true. it back. That's true. In which case, at the moment, Kai doesn't have anything. Yeah. Yeah, next turn's going to be interesting with uh, with Chapter 2. Really looking to find some silver bullet here for Buddha. He really needs to cross his fingers that this expressive iteration doesn't give Kenta a way to interact. Kenta would love uh, another one or two mana spell here, right? Yes. An instant would be nice. Sokin's on. Yeah, and then... Malevolent Hermit. That, that plays. That counts. And he's going to go ahead and play it. Get another trigger from he the could, Holebreaker Horror. He could horror. reset his... Oh, look at that. He reset, He put the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Wow. Back like, I don't want you to hand. dig for removal. Oh, this is so close. Kenta's so close to turning it around, but Kai's also really close at putting it away.
And Kenta, at this point, is just more than happy to just utilize that fable. And, uh, excuse me, uh, bounce the, the tokens created from fable. So um, would much rather do that, obviously, than just bounce the Corpse Appraiser or the Bloodthirsty Adversary. So if given the option and he's just playing a bunch of spells, you're going to see this kind of play pattern continue. Bounce your token, bounce your fable. Bounce your token, bounce your fable. How does Kai get out of this loop? Like, is there any way out at this point? I mean, he can find an, he can, he has a second Infernal Grasp in his deck. And uh, there's a bl another Bloodthirsty Adversary, I believe, that he has. Okay. It's just getting and, tougher and tougher him for him by the moment. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if Kenta draws seven lands in a row too, right? That's the, that's the other hope. Okay, so now that makes things interesting too. Kenta's getting pretty close to just potentially finishing things off by attacking and then using Kazul's huh. Fury uh, to kill things. Oh. Although I don't think he's quite at that point yet. I think he'd still rather just keep that back as a blocker. Although right now, I mean, Kenta doesn't have a way to bounce these tokens. I suppose you can Kazul's Fury away your Hermit to deal two damage to a token, bounce the other token, and then you can then replay the Hermit from the graveyard potentially. You can see Kai looking at his fate here. He has Ooh. a decent board and an opponent on low life, but really no way to get through at the moment. Yeah, and then at, th at this point, Kenta, with all the mana that he has available, he can now protect Hullbreaker Horror, right? That's right. He has an instant, right? You know, just yeah. anything that's instant speed means that it's going to be almost impossible now for Kai to get that card off the battlefield. So he's going to have to win the game through that. I want to see Kenta reset his bank busters. To get more value. <laughs> yeah, if he does anything else with the bank busters, you know, cruise them, resets them, anything, it's <laughs> Yeah. He gets he gets extra points for that for sure. I mean, alternatively, you got the Kazul's Fury. You've got the body in the graveyard. How about an invoke calamity? Sure. Here's Tenacious Underdog out of the yard. Kai has some life total to play with and can try to apply as much pressure as possible. Yeah, and with the Sokenzan in the hand, I don't think Kai can just surprise attack you for lethal, right? You can just make two tokens here. Can also crew a bank buster, right, with the pilot. So that's a 4-4. Four four. Yep. Negate's interesting here, depending on what line Kenta Harane decides to take to try to win the game. Re this is such a crucial these last couple of these last like one or two turns here right because Kai huge it just gets harder and harder for him as Kenta just keeps sifting through his deck here you can feel but, it closing in around Kai Buda okay. here he knows that it's extremely difficult he's going to come in with everything so if Kenta can find a way, way to survive here he can crack back for lethal I believe if you attack for seven, can he and do then it you crew negate? the bank buster, that's 11, and then you cast Kazul's Fury. Through negate? Well, does does Kai have... Yeah, he's getting two treasures here. He does, but then but Kai, if Kenta has another spell, he can bounce that, bounce the negate. Or the treasures, yeah. With the Hullbreaker Horror. And he's got a Malevolent Herman play. But there's a lot of stuff here <laughs> to, to yeah. sort through. Yeah, of course, his board state got absolutely huge. Kenta's... Definitely going to look to Voltage Surge here. That Bank Buster, by the way, did wake up and block a Corpse Appraiser. And I think Kenta's looking at the Killing scenario the where how, how, can I, how can I make it such that I can attack back for lethal? And that involves not blocking with the Hermit, right? Because right, Kai's exactly. only going to have up two mana. That's right. So if you, and and Kai will get in for zero here. Right? He can he yeah. can just kill the hive and bounce the other token. Yes. So this is the the line that lets Kenta Harana Oh, wait, take no, this is milk. this is even safer. Cuz Kai doesn't have burn, right? You just kill the 2-2 and you bounce a treasure. Sure. Kai just has one mana up. 
Kenta can then attack for nine, cast Kazo's Fury. That's 16 damage. Wow. How is it 16? And so this is going to force the issue on Buddha here because if he can't cast the negate anyway, he may as well negate the voltage surge. But I think that'll sit just fine with Kenta Hirano. I mean, Kenta can go to one. Yeah. It's, that's totally fine. Is this how close Kai's going to make this? He's going to be able to get him to one. one. Down like to one. Celeste's trigger in the middle of the game was the difference. <laughs> oh, man. That's incredible. Malevolent Hermit does not do anything here. Decides yeah, not to. Kenta sees it. He's like, look, I go to one, but you're dead. You're tapped out and you are going to die. Tenacious underdog triggers, but there's nothing castable here for Kaibuda. Wow. And there's the Celestis triggering once again, but there's only one card that matters in hand here. And here we go. Lethal. On board. Oh, incredible. Not on board, including the card in hand. That's right. Gets him down to three. And now we're going to see Kazul's Fury Jeez. finish things off here for Kenta Hirane as he ends up winning the match. That's going to knock Kai Bude down another notch on his world championship hopes. And uh, he is going to be in a very tough position, Paul, as uh, 